architecture series phase 2 organized by vikas institute of pharmaceutical sciences rajamundry andhra pradesh vips established institutions innovation council iic in the year 2019 organizing various calendar activities as per the mhrd iic schedule vips is bagging four star rating from the year of, year of its establishment vips is organizing iic impact lecture series and this is phase 2 lecture series of iic on behalf of entire vip vips family i welcome all of you for this session now i request principal and iic president dr g sumalata ma'am to address the gathering with a welcome note over to you ma'am yeah thank you pranita uh, yeah, am i audible everyone yes ma'am you are audible yeah uh, thank you pranita uh, good morning ladies and gentlemen boys and girls on behalf of our vikas institute of pharmaceutical sciences family we welcome you all for this lecture series impact lecture series of iic with a deep sense of immense pleasure i welcome uh, dr ravi kiran sir and also mr pawan kumar to give a talk on this uh, knowledgeable lecture series basically this in institutional innovation council it is mainly established by the ministry of education of uh, education mainly to have a systematically foster the culture of innovation among us, all the students who are graduating in higher education institutions dr ravi kiran sir who is a founder principal scientist and lead instructor of this pcabe has given consent to talk on this novel drug synthesis and uh, delivery methods using synthetic biology definitely sir uh, this uh, this talk will definitely encourage and inspire and nurture young students as well as researchers and teachers to work with new ideas and uh, transform them into prototypes by applying synthetic biological techniques thank you sir for choosing a multinomious topic and i would like to make a note on little Uh, this uh, title which is chosen by mr pawan kumar who is a director of business development south asia and uae softbox systems private limited and this topic uh, like product innovations in last mile deliveries which is going to cover by uh, the speaker today's speaker mr pawan kumar uh, this topic will definitely uh, imbibe a vibrant knowledge in the product innovation across the young minds this uh, may further flashes uh, sign in scouting and pre incubation ideas for this uh, preliminary students who are undergoing in this talk and uh, at the outset i would like to thank uh, our institutions innovation council coordinator our convener Dr. C. Lakshmi, ma'am, and the coordinators, young teachers, Ms. Pranita, and also Arunu Kumari, for making this in a such a disciplinary way, and also making it possible today to conduct this impact lecture series by IAC. And thank you all the students and also other participants who got registered for this uh, session. And definitely, I assure you that this will make you, uh, this will imbibe you. Uh, I mean, house full of knowledge in your young minds, and all the best. And thank you, Dr. Ravi Kiran sir and Pawan Kumar for accepting our invitation. And in spite of your busy schedule, you have accepted and given consent to address the gathering. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Over to Pranita. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your welcome address. Now I take the immense pleasure in inviting today's speaker, Dr. Ravi Kiran S. Yes, A. D. D. Dr. Ravi Kiran S. Yes, A. D. D. He is a founder, principal scientist, at Le and lead instructor from the uh, Center for Advanced Applied Biological Sciences and Entrepreneurship, Rajamandri. Sir has done his uh, PhD from Vanier State University, Detroit, and he has two PGs. 
post graduations one is from the prestigious andhra university in vishakhapatnam india and another post grad degree from wayne state university detroit usa he has many accomplishments in the fields of startup laboratories in rajamandri and he is a sci scientist uh, and he also pursued uh, research in the stem cell sciences and the regenerative medicines in bangalore india and he has over of 20 plus years of experience in the research in usa canada and india now i welcome dr ravikiran yes for this session over to you sir Uh, so you can uh, start the session sir yes madam uh, thanks for the kind introduction i am actually very much delighted to be invited to this uh, impact lecture and um i chose a topic that has some novelty because you know typically a lot of people talk about drug delivery systems and i thought you know we'll uh, do something that has not been presented in the past uh i hope uh, people are familiar with something called uh, uh the synthetic biology uh, can everybody see my slides i just wanted to make sure that you guys can see my uh, slides okay sounds good All right, so let's get started. Yeah, so the topic uh, that I chose is to uh, synthesize and deliver the drugs using synthetic biology. So, uh, before I get started, uh, you know, I want to give a brief uh, background about my laboratory. Uh, so, we are a training lab, for, primarily focused on the undergraduate and uh, postgraduate students. Uh, we train scientists and scientific entrepreneurs. Uh, so we are a non-profit, and uh, we look out for the cutting-edge research, and we want to bring the global standards to India. So our first uh, lab was opened in 2019 in uh, Rajamandri, uh, where we have about 25 life projects, uh, all managed by mostly undergraduate students. And then we moved on to the Chakravartam, the city of Destiny, where we started a new branch. Uh, so uh, recently, we also started a new uh, laboratory in the campus of Andhra University. So we are uh, slowly expanding, and we are bringing the global standards to the uh, doorstep of the undergrad students and uh, graduate students. Uh, I mean, the PG students. Um, so we also uh, train the research scholars. We collaborate with uh, postdocs and also faculty for the academic projects. Uh, so we have successfully trained. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the slide actually says more than 70 students, but uh, now we have trained uh, more than 200 students so far, uh, combining both management team and research uh, team. Uh, so the student population has been really increasing a lot. Uh, we are very glad and uh, very pleased to see uh, people have, uh, uh, you know, uh, believe in belief in us, and uh, we are maintaining our quality. As you can see in this uh, slide, you know, on the left side, I'm showing you the uh, laboratory in Rajmandal. Uh, on the right side, you're seeing a bit of students in Rajmandal. Uh, so, with that being said, um, you know, I want to move into the actual um, discussion today. So, uh, you guys are uh, are familiar with the classical pharmacology. In a classical pharmacology, you take a small molecule, which is a drug, and you know it could be agonist or antagonist to a receptor. It's all about the dose-response curves, right? So, depending on the concentration of the drug. It could act as an agonist, and if you overdose it, it could act as an antagonist. Uh, so this is classical pharmacology, and also the, uh, the the effect of the small molecule primarily depends on the bioavailability and also the ADME tox properties. I'm sure uh, everybody knows what ADME stands for: it's absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. So these are the primary topics. Uh, you know the pharmacology. Focuses on, and 
we come up with different types of pharmacological or pharmaceutical formulations to make sure that these actual small molecules can survive the acidic nature or the acidic environment of the stomach. Uh, as you already know, we have the proton pumps in the stomach. And uh, these protons, uh, basically protons are hydrogen ions, uh, so they're acidic. So these protons, they're constantly pumped into the stomach um, for the digestion. So uh, this is a very critical process that happens in almost every uh, animal in the animal kingdom that has the digestive system. So um, any drug that we take, it has to survive the acidic nature of the stomach. So we come up with different types of pharmaceutical formulations, uh, you know, with the control release, uh, uh, you know, types or, you know, some type of uh, special coating on the drug so that it survives the acidity. Uh, so <clears throat> we do all these kinds of formulations to increase the oral bioavailability of these compounds so that they can survive the stomach and get into the actual gut where it gets absorbed. Um, so this is fine, and the, you know, the pharmacology and the pharmaceutical formulations are doing a fantastic job in this field. However, there is a problem, uh, typically when you take drugs such as uh, anti-cancer drugs. Uh, so most of you already know that anti-cancer drugs are targeting your own cells, right? Cancer cells are our own cells, they are not foreign cells. Uh, versus bacterial. So if you have a bacterial infection, if you're targeting a protein or you know drug target from the bacteria, then it's fine because bacteria is coming from outside. It's not a part of the human. But in cancer, uh, you know your own body cells are you know undergoing mutations and starting to divide uncontrollably. And that's where um, the anti-cancer drugs not only target the cancer cells but also target the healthy cells. Uh, so it, that's why you have a lot of side effects. Uh, so for example, cisplatin. Uh, so cisplatin is commonly, routinely used in anti-cancer drug. So cisplatin actually binds to the DNA and it, it is responsible for uh, severe damage of DNA so that it pushes the cells to apoptosis so that the cell can actually uh, kill itself. Um, but the, the problem is, you know, the drugs, we can come up with great formulations. We can, the drug will survive the acidity in the stomach. It goes into the uh, intestine and it gets absorbed. Everything is fantastic. But the only problem is for anti-cancer drugs, they get absorbed by all the cells, which means you're actually destroying the healthy cells also. And that causes systemic toxicity. So uh, no matter what kind of formulation you come, you come up with, this is always a problem because precise delivery uh, is not possible for, from the pharmacology and pharmaceutical point of view. So we took it out for a spin and we thought, you know, why don't we think outside the box? And uh, we wanted to uh, approach a different way. So in this slide, I'm showing you a structure of DNA polymerase. It's bound to the DNA double strand and where the new strand, the new daughter strand is getting synthesized. And as you can see here, uh, my mouse pointer, I hope you can see my mouse pointer. Um, this is a cisplatin, the small molecule drug that uh, binds to the DNA and it interferes in the synthesis of the new daughter strand. Uh, so this means, you know, this particular cisplatin can bind anywhere in any cell into any DNA, which means it's not only binding to the cancer cells, but it is also binding to the regular healthy cells. Um, so, you know, typically the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration from the uh, United States, uh, it, it says, you know, it should not be given more than three to four uh, weeks, like once uh, every three to four weeks, because, you know, you want to space out that systemic toxicity. Otherwise, you're basically killing the uh, healthy cells. Uh, and, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not just the cells. It starts with the cellular to cytotoxicity and it eventually results into multi-organ failure. So, you know, you can talk about eyes, uh, retinal toxicity, hepatotoxicity, cardiology, uh, gastrointestinal toxicity, hematological toxicity, uh, nephrotoxicity. And if your drug is, uh, you know, highly bioavailable, it can actually cross the blood-brain barrier and go into the 
um, the nervous system, and you can also uh, see the neurotoxicity. So uh, the cisplatin is a very small molecule and it can get into any of these organs and wherever it goes, it creates damage. And if, I mean, it's a fantastic drug because you know, it kills the cancer cells, but at the same time, it is also going into uh, the healthy cells and that are uh, critical for the function. So uh, you know, it's very difficult to control this uh, uh, systemic toxicity of cisplatin. And so uh, by using the classical pharmacology or the routine pharmaceutical formulations, you know, it is not possible to reduce this uh, uh, systemic toxicity. So uh, we uh, started using the bacterial cells. So what we designed here in our lab in Stockholm is we wanted to use bacterial cells as the drug delivery vehicles. So what we do is we take these uh, special bacterial cells. For example, I'm showing you here the E. coli strain, uh, missile 1917. So this is one of the strains that's commonly used uh, in synthetic biology. So synthetic biology, uh, so let me just back off and give you a brief introduction to synthetic biology. Um, so usually in uh, genetic engineering, uh, we just focus on like one gene or maybe two genes at a time. So that's genetic engineering. But the synthetic biology is where we are actually redesigning the genome of the bacteria. So we are actually taking the chromosomal DNA and we are actually deleting the unwanted genes and we are putting in the genes that we want so that we can control the organism completely. So that's the synthetic biology. Um, so please don't get confused. Uh, synthetic biology has nothing to do with organic or medicinal chemistry, uh, you know, organic synthesis. Uh, that's completely different. So we call this synthetic biology only because we are redesigning the genomes of these bacterial cells uh, so that they can function in the way that we want them to function. Uh, so the bacteria the strain that I'm showing you here is uh, uh, E. coli missile 1917. It's actually a probiotic uh, bacteria. So this probiotic bacteria is commonly used as capsules. So what they do is they take a uh, uh, silicon-based uh, chips, kind of, which are biodegradable, and uh, the bacterial cells are immobilized onto this uh, uh, silicon chip. And so, you know, they, they can be packed into capsules or tablets, and uh, you can take them as uh, probiotics so they can help you with the digestion and everything. Now, uh, previously, uh, you know, there is a group of scientists uh, in the, uh, I think this is from the United States, uh, it's uh, published in Nature Communications in 2019. Um, so these, uh, this group of uh, people, what they have done is they genetically engineered uh, and uh, you know, uh, the synthetic biology approach, by using the synthetic biology approach, they modified this E. coli missile 1917 in such a way that if you administer these cells, they would actually go down into your large intestine. And uh, as you can see on this uh, left side of the screen, you know, this is the typical digestive system. Uh, this is the oral administration. You have the stomach, duodenum, small intestine, and the large intestine. Uh, so let's say you have an inflammation in the large intestine. And that inflammation may sometimes lead to a rupture of the surface, the epithelial layer. Uh, so as shown here in, in this case, uh, you can see panel D here without the patch, minus patch. So in this case, what is happening is the blood cells, or the WBC, the immune cells, they're all leaking into the lumen of your intestine because of the rupture. So you can see this is the epithelial layer here, but you can see that there is no epithelial layer here, which means it's ruptured. So what they have done is they have administered these uh, um, synthetically modified uh, missile 1917 strain of E. coli cells so that they actually go only to that place and they release, uh, they synthesize and release special proteins. So these are all special proteins. And these proteins, they actually form a patch. Okay, so they act like a sealant. So they're sealing this layer where you have a problem uh, where the rupture is present. So this is so precise, okay? 
And so now these uh, immune cells are not leaking out. As you can see, there's no uh, immune cells that are leaking out because the uh, patch is acting as a barrier. So, and this is highly specific. Uh, so based on this, we thought maybe we can also design something uh, similar. Uh, yeah, so by the way, this is the actual uh, mechanism. So I'm showing you here the uh, E. coli nestle uh, cell. So this is one single cell. And this is the chromosomal DNA, which is also known as genomic DNA. And they have done genetic engineering. And so this uh, bacteria will actually produce this patch protein. And this patch is uh, released so that it acts as a barrier, as I showed you in the previous uh, slide. So this is the actual patch that acts as a barrier. So yeah, these are the detailed uh, mechanism. And if you are interested in this, and you can uh, probably go find this paper in the Nature Communications, published in 2019. All the details are published in the paper. So now what we are planning to do is we want to take something similar and then we want to um, synthesize drugs instead of proteins. We want to uh, genetically engineer the bacteria and uh, engineer the genome of the bacteria in such a way so that the bacteria has the whole entire pathway of drug synthesis. Uh, so let's say if I want to uh, synthesize a drug such as a cisplatin, what I'm going to do is I'm going to program the entire pathway of all the proteins, all the enzymes that are needed for different steps in the synthesis of cisplatin. So we are going to put, on, put them all into the genome of this E. coli missile. And so that this E. coli is able to synthesize cisplatin. Okay? And it will only synthesize the cisplatin when and where it is required. So we we attach uh, special uh, trigger points or centers, and these are all uh, genetic circuits. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry, I was only given half an hour, so it's really hard for me to explain all the details of genetic circuits. So I'm going to have to uh, glance over. Uh, so we are um, designing these cells in such a way that you know these cells will precisely go to the tumors. So you know. There might be small tumors that you're uh, unable to detect or diagnose using the MRI or you know, CT scan or X-rays. Uh, so even for those uh, small, tiny tumors, you know, these cells will actually uh, identify those uh, micro tumors. And they would actually go to that area and they start synthesizing the drug and then they will release the drug only in that area. So by doing that, what happens is all the drug uh, that is synthesized by the cell, uh, you know, it is released at the point of tumor. And when it is done so, the tumor cells, they're high in metabolism. So they absorb a lot of uh, ingredients, nutrients, food, and everything. So all the drug that is synthesized by the bacterial cells is absorbed by the tumor cells uh, locally in the same area. So this is the idea that we're uh, working on. Uh, so uh, let me just show you uh, how it is going to work. Uh, so this is an external detectable signal, which means you know this could be a specific chemical that is found in the tumors. Uh, so when, so this is the E. coli missile cell. So when this special chemical coming out from the tumor cells uh, goes into the E. coli cell that it would actually bind to the promoter and it induces the expression of uh, genes. And these genes, you know, they produce the anti-cancer proteins or anti-cancer drugs. Uh, so uh, these are the molecular details. And if you uh, zoom out a little bit, as you can see, this is a tumor. So all these uh, 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 light blue color cells, this is a tumor. And what you can do is you can uh, use the synthetic um, uh, e. coli cells to release shRNA molecules or you know cytokines or uh, cytotoxic agents or pro drugs or antigens and antibodies so you can actually deliver precisely only into the tumor so you can clearly see this is the tumor here and these e. coli cells are going into the tumor and specifically releasing these drugs or antibodies or all these things into the tumor so that we don't have to worry about getting things circulated into the blood and causing uh, systemic toxicity in other organ systems, right? So in this way, 
the drug is only synthesized, as you can see on the left side. The drug will be synthesized by the E. coli um, only when it gets the signal from outside, which means that happens only when the E. coli cell goes to the tumor. So when it reaches the tumor, it finds these chemicals in the tumor microenvironment, and when these chemicals enter the cell, they trigger the expression of genes and production of the drug. And that drug is locally released within the tumor so that it is so precise and it is completely controlled. And we can actually design the genetic circuit in so in so way, in such a way so that um, it, it can be controlled released. Okay, so we can actually um, design the E. coli cell in such a way that the drug will be synthesized probably for one hour and then it stops for another hour and then it will start again. So, you know, we can control these uh, precisely by using genetic engineering and synthetic biology tools. Um, so, uh, so far I have been using the word synthetic uh, biology and genetic circuits. Uh, so, these are some of the, uh, uh, you know, diagrams that we use. Uh, I know this is a bit complicated, but, you know, I'll try my best to uh, simplify this. Uh, so, the three main things that you look for is input, processing and output. So it's kind of like a computer, right? Uh, so uh, inputs is the extracellular environment or so we use this and or. So these are kind of like these logic gates that we use in electronics. Uh, I'm sure you guys have heard about these gates during your intermediate classes. So in the electronics, so when they design the circuits, they use these logic gates, you know, AND gate, OR gate, or NOR gate, or something like that, right? So we design these logics, and we have this uh, uh, this sensor, which is the promoter of the team. And then, you know, when this uh, input, uh, whatever it could be extracellular, or it could be intracellular, when it binds to the promoter, then it turns on the gene expression. And when the gene expression happens, you get these uh, proteins or the drug molecules, and that take care of the rest of it. Uh, and then you have the output. Output is where uh, the effectors would go and affect. And there's a feedback loop that can control this sensor. So this is kind of like an electronic circuit, but we do this with genes. So we call them as genetic circuits. Um, I'm sorry that I'm uh, skipping a, a lot of information here because in the interest of time. Um, yeah, so let me summarize. Uh, so we are using the synthetic biology to build in uh, genetic circuits to program uh, these E. coli cells to sense, uh, you know, particular uh, signals from the cancer cells or the tumor microenvironment. And then that would be used to trigger the synthesis of drugs within the E. coli cell. And so once the drug is synthesized, it is released by the E. coli cell precisely in the, uh, you know, the target, which is usually a tumor. And then uh, we can do this in a controlled uh, release manner. We don't have to use any special pharmaceutical formulations. It is all included in the genetic circuits. So we can design the logic gates in such a way so that the E. coli cell can synthesize and release in a controlled release fashion. Um, so uh, we can further extend this for other things, uh, you know, in, uh, especially where nanotechnology is also a failure. So I, I mean, this is, uh, I want to take one minute to explain the difference between synthetic biology and nanotechnology. So these days, everybody's interested in nanotechnology and, uh, you know, nanoparticles based drug delivery, which is fine. Uh, you know, you can use nanoparticles to deliver the drugs. But keep in mind, the nanoparticles, they still cause the systemic cytotoxicity. So if you're working with anti-cancer drugs, nanotechnology is probably not the best idea. So that's why synthetic biology has that, uh, you know, uh, extra bonus or extra advantage where you can precisely synthesize and deliver the required amount of drugs at the site of action, uh, which is usually a tumor. So uh, initially we are working on uh, lung cancer and we want to eventually extend this to pan-cancer therapeutics as in that we want to target all kinds of cancers um, by using these small molecule drugs. And also we're uh, in, um, in the field of uh, RNA delivery. So we designed some micro RNAs that can control the gene expressions in the cancer cells, uh, such as the P53 gene and RAS and all those things. 
So, but you know, it could be RNA delivery, it could be <clears throat> small molecule delivery for any of these things, you know, the synthetic biology is a great avenue to explore. Uh, with that, I would conclude my talk. Um, thank you very much for your attention and I would take up any questions if you have. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. That was a clean presentation. Uh, participants, if you have any queries, uh, you can ask, sir, or you can drop in the chat box. <clears throat> now, the session is open for uh, question and answers. Participants, do respond. And if you have any queries, you can ask, sir, now. Sir, good morning, sir. I am Prince Lee, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Sir, I am Prince Lee, sir. I'm Professor uh, Vikas Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences. <clears throat> sir, can we use synthetic biology for uh, other treat other type of diseases also, sir? Like neurodegenerative diseases, autoimmune diseases, like that also. Yes, so it's it's all about uh, tweaking the genetic circuits. So uh, you can program the cells uh, in whatever way you want, uh, but you know it's a very young field, so there's a lot to be explored. Uh, we're in the beginning of this thing, and. Uh, there are only a few places where people are actually doing the synthetic biology. I would say you can count them with fingers, you know, like uh, MIT, Harvard, uh, Oxford. And in India, I'm not sure if there's any lab that does synthetic biology, but we're doing synthetic biology in the Thank you very much, sir. Participants, do respond. Sir, any queries from your side? So, not wasting much of the time. Now I request Professor Dr. S. Kinsley, ma'am, to propose vote of thanks. Uh, a very good morning to all. I would like to thank our uh, director, Dr. Dr. T. V. Narayana, sir, or secretary, Dr. Bharat Vikas, sir, or principal, ma'am, Dr. G. Sumalata, ma'am, to support and encourage to conduct this seminar, to conduct and attend this seminar. On behalf of Vikas Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences and the entire management. I would like to express my gratitude to all esteemed delegates of the webinar for their presence and contribution to make this webinar a great success. I extend my sincere gratitude from the bottom of my heart to our honorable speaker, Dr. Ravikiran Sir, founder, principal scientist, and lead instructor of TCAPSI Lab, to take out time from, from his busy schedule to grace this event. We are blessed to have you, Sir. Thank and you. Sir, Sir, you have enlightened the delegates with tremendous knowledge related to the field of novel drug delivery methods using synthetic biology, which was very highly beneficial to our uh, budding uh, pharmacists, research scholars, and faculties with innovative research ideas in the future. So thank finally, you. yeah, finally, once again, I thank you all very much for being with us today and have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir. I'm handing over the session to Pranita. Pranita, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> now I request our vice principal and IAC convener, Dr. Sri Lakshmi, ma'am, to introduce the second speaker of the day. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Pranita. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Very good morning to one and all. I, Dr. D. Sri Lakshmi, uh, Vice Principal and Convener of uh, Vikas Institute of IIC, uh, Vikas Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences. I take the privilege to welcome our uh, second guest of this session. Uh, before going into welcoming him, uh, I, I want to tell a small thing about him. He is my uh, classmate and he is my batchmate in the lab also. We are BFARM classmates. And uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Pavan K. H. S. Uh, welcome to the uh, session, sir. Thank you. Uh, a small uh, introduction about uh, Pavan, sir. Uh, Pavan K. H. S. is the director of uh, business development South Asia and UAE. Mr. Pavan have a uh, postgraduate degree in the field of formulation science from United Kingdom and master of business administration degree from ICFI Business School. He has over seven. Seven plus years of experience in the business and marketing. Apart from this, we have achievements in the field of sales, business, and been an active contributor for the new COVID vaccine distribution, 
in uh, pk he also played an active part in az covix program which is international distribution this is about a small introduction about him and uh, uh, i would like to invite him to this session from uh, management faculty and all the other people who have been uh, uh, there in this uh, session over to pavan sir Sir, yeah, please thank, you. Th thank you. Thank uh, you. Am I audible uh, in the beginning? I would like to check in case if my... Yes, you are audible, but a yeah. bit louder is... Uh... Okay. Uh, so you, you want me to talk a little loud, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Just give me a second. Um, just a second. Yeah. Um, how is my mic now? Um, you can uh, you can hear me well. Is there any? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now the it background? is. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is definitely a privilege to uh, to meet Dr. Sri Lakshmi. Uh, we both were uh, peers during our uh, bachelor degree program we were doing in uh, Babatla College of Pharmacy. Uh, we had a very good uh, time and interaction during our uh, schooling during our college, I should say. Uh, and it is it is great to see uh, Dr. Sri Lakshmi going to the uh, level as a vice principal for uh, uh, in the College of Pharmacy, working with various upcoming guests for the industry. And you know, and um, I am glad that I am being a part of one of the sessions that is being organized today. Um, my session that I am going to do is not going to be very very technical. Uh, it is a general discussion, but um, what I would like to emphasize is that you know. Um, during my during my um, tenure, during my B pharmacy, I've done my bachelor's in pharmacy, and then I went to UK um, to do my master's degree, right? Um, and I've done my master's in formulation sciences. Um, later on, I have came to India uh, for my family, and I started, you know, working for uh, various companies within the R and D in the formulation analytical R and D. But there was something that I was thinking that, you know, I could able to do. Um, I could venture itself into something different than into the research. Um, I have actually, God has given a path to work into various big organizations where I, I really take the pride that recent AstraZeneca COVAX program. Um, and, you know, there is another uh, GSK vaccine we are actually currently working on for the international distribution. Um, the company name is Clover Biopharmaceutical. There is an India. I couldn't discuss much, but it is about 1.5 billion doses of vaccines distribution within the PEK China and also within the APAC region. Um, the COVID era has not gone yet. So try to understand that um, um, the COVID is, is still there. And, you know, the vaccines, what we have taken are just the single or double dose or a triple dose vaccines. They will able to keep the antibodies going in till certain time, depending on the human body, um, that how it responds against the virus. So we definitely will see a lot of COVAX, COVAX in, uh, COVID vaccine programs. And, you know, a lot of new variants are going to come. And this is an ongoing process that we are expecting that until the year 2030, this disease is going to be a pandemic uh, kind of situation. You know, we, we will able to see one more kind of maybe you know uh, a severe lockdown also we do not know because this is something like a panic situation so i would urge everyone to uh, to keep and to take an enough amount of care while you are actually going in public places okay without wasting the time um i'm trying to share my screen i am trying to share my screen i just want you to come in if you can see my screen i'm just uh, trying to share the tab can you see can you see my screen at all yeah okay um so today my uh, i have actually had a vast vast amount of experience into um into the supply chain management into the logistics um i had a privilege to work with the companies like pfizer astrogenica johnson and johnson Gilead, day in and day out i talk with about mm -hmm. merck um, I, I speak with various stakeholders in different companies in the purchase, logistics, supply chain, lo 
supply chain or even in the research analytical excuse research excuse me yeah when your your screen is sharing but ppt you are not sharing you are sharing your uh, laptop screen okay uh, not sharing the ppt the entire screen i now i am sharing the entire <laughs> screen because i am quite okay. new to use this google we are used to use the uh, use the teams or you know the uh, webex or zoom yeah yeah okay so, okay uh, it's okay yeah so um now i will um, uh, you could just for me in case if you can see my screen or else can yeah. can i share yeah now now you can share it i think see uh, yeah. your okay. screen is visible now it, it uh, is visible, you share right? it completely yeah yeah i will yeah. i will put yes. that in the uh, in the slide show um yeah. my major my major focus today that you know in the field of logistics in the field of end to end logistics you know we talk about various international supply chain logistics transportation manufacturers to the distributors to the consolidated buyers so on right so i would like to ask you know even the faculty members or uh, the peers or um, or any students you know i would like to ask them what do they really understand about a last mile delivery i want the session to be a little interactive so that's the reason i am asking a question it is not like you know i would like to understand you know where we are at and um, uh, how, how many people do not do know that you know uh, the drone kind of deliveries does happen or what is the future for it why there is a need does anyone can able can someone able to throw some uh, answers what do you i mean what do you actually think about the last mile delivery um okay uh, without wasting the time right you know um, my my focus area that i would like to talk is about um, the current innovations that are happening in the last mile delivery i would able to talk to you uh, talk and let you know why the need for a last mile delivery is important and what has happened we all have seen the pandemic uh, what really has happened is the question right um and i have been working with uh, these companies you know to understand what are their on ground challenges for you know uh, drone delivery is one of the program i am working with companies like dhl db shankar or you know there are only few people who are really 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 like you know aggressively working on this way of model because that requires a significant amount of capital expenditure investment that should go in and these are like research and development projects and they have to overcome certain concerns i work with this company called csf global it is into the active and passive temperature control packaging service provider so i work with many of the airlines like qatar lufthansa british airways emirates or even turkish airlines or uh, china airlines singapore airlines you know different airlines almost 42 airlines across the globe uh, where you know these airline logistics people will be handling the life saving medicines the temperature sensitive products so on the ground we take an utmost amount of care to follow the quality standards um while i was working in usp i was able to enforce these standards meeting the people who are actually working in the research and development team who are working not in the drug discovery but in the api or in the formulation uh, departments we used to tell them that you know they have to follow the monograph standards and you know the uh, general test procedures that are required that are actually posted in the regulatory because if they do not follow the standards if they do not implement the standards the overall quality objective is not met okay but the fact is that when you are actually working on a product the ultimate goal of reaching quality the whole objective of 100% quality product that is delivered to the customer that is the ultimate goal your job is not just done once you manufacture the product you leave it at the warehouse and then your job is not just done your job is that you should able to make sure that the medicine reaches to the patient in a safe good 100% efficacy condition without any loss in the potency if you do not do that that is going to impact the patient lives right i hope you are all getting the point right you know we actually see certain kind of um certain kind of myths in the market in the past about 10 years back people were very much worried to go to the government hospitals in india they they will be worried to take the medicines from the primary healthcare centers because the fact is that the people were not maintaining there in the pharmacies in the government hospitals or in the primary healthcare centers they were not maintaining any kind of standards they were not checking the therapeutic efficacy the expiry dates of the products and they were just buying from the local manufacturing companies where they were not sticking to the standards ultimately if we do not if we manufacture with a lot of effort 
putting all the ingredients together, doing the quality testing, keeping it in your pharmaceutical company stores, waiting for someone to pick up and they do not know how to handle the medicine. And you know, the entire objective is going to collapse because ultimately the medicines do not work and the patient lives will not able to have an impact that will impact the global healthcare system. Okay, tell me one thing during the pandemic time, right? Uh, people were panicked, right? We, we have seen certain cases that people had no access of medicines. The pharmacies were shut and, you know, for getting the medicines, it's, I'm not just talking about the case of India. There were like more than 190 countries. They were like running around the countries like India, where we were able to produce the lowest, lowest cost of medicine with highest quality. And our people in India has shipped tons and tons of medicines or the pandemic or the COVID drugs during that time because no country was prepared for the pandemic. And during that time, I, I had like various calls and discussions like from the various pharma companies across the globe saying, we want medicines, we want them to be supplied, shipped. And there were like limited number of flights going around across the globe. And they, they wanted to use any and every kind of service during the entire pandemic. So what is going to happen in case if the patient do not get the medicine today and if they receive by tomorrow or, or after a week, the patient health is going to deteriorate. OK, so for that, we need to understand that we have to provide the effective last mile solution until it reaches to the customers. Has anyone had any questions? OK, so typically, what is a last mile delivery? So um, when I say last mile delivery, we know that the medicines are manufactured in the factory. We are able to put it in the storage or a regional facility. Like, for example, we manufacture something in Mumbai or in Goa. We are able to bring it to the regional storage in Hyderabad by air or by truck. And, you know, from there, the criticality is the last mile, like how you are going to manage till it reaches to the remote villages. We have many number of remote villages across India. I'm, not, I'm only taking the case of India. But take the case of Africa, right? You know, we have about 62 countries, 62 countries in that continent where they where they do not have kind of, you know, very good roads. Even in the country like India, if you go to the state of Uttar Pradesh, if you go to the state of Bihar, right? You know, if you go to the state of um, even in the Andhra, right? Even in Tamil Nadu, the remote villages do not even have a, a very good road transportation. And during the flooding also, we see that people do not get the access to the hospitals and to the medicines. So what, what I'm trying to ascertain is when the product reaches to the warehouse, right? The journey of the product that goes to the customer's hand is the last mile delivery. And I see the many of the cases that uh, the pharmaceutical graduates, I have actually evidenced myself while I was doing the graduation, there was not a kind of limelight for the people to guide them what kind of jobs that they can able to get in. And there is always a myth for a pharmaceutical graduate that you know, once they complete the graduation, they'll be able to go and work in a pharma company. That's good. But you know, there are a lot of jobs. There are a lot of innovations going beyond working just in the pharma company. Nowadays, we are talking about the pharmacovigilance. We are talking about the forensic studies. We are talking about the last mile deliveries. We are talking about the logistics. We are talking about uh, n number of different things. So I would like to urge the students today to learn more, to try to open your eyes and, you know, try to look into different dimensions where you will able to find a number of opportunities. And in this presentation, I'm going to tell you during this last mile, this is just one part of our 5% or 1% or one part, 1 part of the entire subject of the logistics that I'm concentrating on today. And in this one, I'm going to tell you what kind of opportunities you are going to come across during the whole last mile. That means that these are all unmet needs this will be the future. This will be one of the futuristic uh, model uh, going forward. Maybe I will also care, post you some examples in, in the coming presentation slides. So in the last mile delivery, right? The companies right now, they are, they are trying to aim the patients to be safe, right? That we all know when they are manufacturing, they want their, they want their products to be going to the patients and they want the medicines to work, right? Uh, and they are charging for it. They are not giving anything on free of cost. And as a right human being, we have a right that, you know, we, when we are buying medicines for ourselves or for our parents or for our kids, we want them to work. Either it can be the medicines, vaccines, or, you know, the biologics, injections, or anything that actually heals your health, right? Because in, in a course of time, in any, fa in any family, every person will fall sick and they want medicine. 
and if that medicine do not work or if that medicine only work for 50 percent you will keep taking medicines and again and again the reason why the reason why the medicines do not work is that they will not able to go for a proper storage or proper transportation condition or the medicine by the time it reaches it is very much near to the expiry date so that is also important why the medicines expires because if we do not have a proper kind of logistic system in place the way of inventory is going to pile up in the warehouse and by the time the medicines reaches to the pharmacies half of the shelf life will be gone that means the medicines are not actually going to i mean we do not know right you know uh, in the current scenario till it reaches to the expiry we all we all in the impression that it will work right and the myth is that if the if it is near to the expiry uh, we are very much suspicious whether the medicine is going to work or not so there are some there are some cases that i have seen people will do not want to take the medicines in case if they are like one month about to expire right so why in order to uh, save the cost you know if the medicines expires by the time it reaches to the pharmacy it is going to be a kind of case that the pharmacists will have to dump them or will have to shred them off or will have to you know uh, uh, you, they, they just have to reject the material and that is going to lead to a loss for the company as well. So, uh, so far what we know about last mile delivery, right? So maybe you would have seen the uh, many of, you know, the youngsters, the millennials, they are using the uh, applications like Swiggy, Zomato or, you know, Uber Eats or something. So far we have been using the last mile deliveries majorly for the food transport or for the restaurant or for uh, uh, something that you would like to order from a restaurant from a or from a food center or any kind of instamart groceries or something you are trying to use these for right but going forward there is definitely a demand that goes up because you can see the cases like reliance who is investing millions of uh, dollars into companies like netmets i don't know whether you have heard about netmets there are companies like 1mg netmets and uh, there are companies like you know uh, uh, 1c pharmacy or uh, dawakhana there are n number of online based e-commerce portals that are coming up why they wanted to come up because they wanted to make the patient life more easier comfortable and they wanted to you know make the medicines affordable reach to them at the earliest without any hassle they do not need to wait for medicines during the pandemic time we know that there is one medicine called remdesivir the, does anyone know you know how uh, i'm sure that everyone might have actually run around for this medicine right because there is a shortage of supply even if there is supply people do not know where to buy it, right or not and i have seen cases that people have come from mumbai to hyderabad or hyderabad to near uh, to ahmedabad to get like you know six injections of remdesivir to uh, to get to their patients right you know and it was like a costly affair also at one point of time so because we do not have an effective logistics last mile delivery systems in place, the, there is manufacturers like Sipla who was manufacturing in Mumbai, uh, but uh, there, are, there are companies like Hetero Drugs, they were manufacturing this Remdesivir, but there is a shortage, whether there is really a shortage, whether what kind of, you know, the tra tracking traceability do not, people do not know anything at all. They were like, you know, going through some chain of contacts and someone say that, yes, I have medicine. They were like running like, you know, headless chickens. So this is the kind of situation we are in at the moment, right? And when we talk about an end-to-end -end logistics model, right? You know, people think that my job will be done once if I manufacture the medicine, I'll leave it in the warehouse. I'll send it to, by A to, for example, if you are sending to somewhere like in Denmark or to Africa or to UAE or Middle East or Bahrain, you take any kind of lane, right? Once you send it to the nearest airport, for example, uh, into the Africa, if you, are, if you are just sending it to Africa, Africa is just not an Africa, right? You have South Africa, North Africa, you have Angola, you have Congo, you have different kind of, different kind of, you know, territories. And then in those countries, you have different villages. And there are cases that people do not have a kind of road mode transportation, right? And if you see the, the, the way, the, you know, the medicines have been carried, by few of the african people they do not know they were like very happy yes we got the medicines but are these medicines going to work for them and the biggest question is that is the medicine going to reach to the patient on time does the patient really need to wait a patient who is in the intensive care unit does he need to wait for a medicine after three days when he is on a ventilator or intensive care unit he wants an injection to be done today he cannot wait for 48 hours or 72 hours till the medicine arrives by road or by sea or by air 
So in order to cut down that, we require a lot of innovation. And that innovation in the last mile delivery have certain challenges, right? These are all called, I have actually put up something called systematic challenges and on-ground challenges, right? The on-ground challenges are very simple, right? You know, for example, if someone is taking the medicine by road, you see a lot of people carrying the boxes of medicines on two wheelers, right? For them, the basic kind of fuel consumption costs are really high. For them, they will try to cut down their costs to save the fuel costs while they are actually uh, riding the bikes, right? And definitely it is a value uh, that they will have to add up where their margins will be uh, shredded down and where they will not able to make any amount of money during the last mile. That's why people do not want to spend a lot of money. They, they do not want to pick up each and every single box and deliver it to the remote villages. The, the reason, reason, there is a reason why they, there is a delay for the medicines or vaccines that reaches to the villages because, for example, if from here, from Hyderabad, somewhere in Adilabad, in case if I have to send one box of medicines, only one small shipper of medicines, imagine how much it will cost in case if I put it in a blue dot courier, right? Or you imagine blue dot may not able to serve to that remote location. So I might have to send a dedicated vehicle or a truck. And you know, that fuel cost is very expensive. And uh, in order to erase off all these kind of burdens, you know, we need to bring up an innovation in place. And these are like unmet needs in the industry. A lot of people are just working on the quality, quality. Okay, you're working on quality. You are actually trying to build up a product that is having the highest amount of quality, highest amount of therapeutic efficacy, no impurities at all. Your medicine looks good. But what is the point in case if it doesn't reach us to the end user who is sitting in a remote location somewhere, right, from the village? No villager can able to afford their, uh, uh, like, you know, healthcare, uh, their treatments in, uh, in the hospitals like Apollo hospitals, right? No individual cannot able to, not every individual can able to go to an Apollo hospital or Kim's hospital. They will have to go to their nearest primary healthcare, healthcare center or a government hospital. And the last mile delivery is delays because people will be worried that I am just sending a box of medicines, which is just costing about 25,000 rupees, but I will have to hire a vehicle that is costing me 20,000 rupees. I wouldn't do it. And they will say that, okay, once I get about 10 boxes order to that village, then only I will send it because that is impacting their margins because they will not make any kind of money on the ground. There are like, you know, poor route plannings there and people, and apart from the people talking about carbon emissions and transportation for sending one single box, you are hiring a diesel truck or an auto trolley or something. Imagine how much amount of environmental pollution it is going to happen, right? This we see day in and out. I see that very regularly. And we will try to sum up in a case that, you know, how much amount of route planning is necessary? What kind of patients are there? For example, there could be one area where there are a lot of people who are suffering from diabetics, right? Diabetes. And then we will be able to work with the manufacturer to kind of do a product strategy where these products will reach to the end users effectively with a very less cost. So, and systematically, there are n number of challenges. Like, you know, there is a poor commodity portfolio. There is no inventory management system. Uh, for example, in, re in remote villages, they do not stock up the medicines. They will just made to order. For example, if they have a need, they will order today. They will be able to get it in the evening or later on in the next day morning. Can the patient wait? No. So that is about the poor invent information systems and inventory management. If, for example, uh, if I stay in one village, but I have an access to another village, a primary healthcare center, I will call them. And I will ask them that, do you have certain X, Y, Z kind of injection? And they do not have a system in place. And that requires a kind of innovation to track the system, to keep the medicines intact and, you know, to supply them. And even developed countries are also struggling in that arena, I should say. Okay. This definitely is going to lead to inadequately poorly configured medicine because one side, one size of transport do not fit for everything. The transportation cost will be super high. There will be a shortage of personnel who will be able to travel all the way at all the times because they have to travel 30 a month for sending one one shipper uh, one one shipper in a day. That is never going to be possible. And you know, there are if we keep talking about n number of challenges, we'll be able to start rethinking. Okay, because every single individual will actually have have undergone these kind of challenges in their personal life as well. So sitting in their shoes, you know, what is the need for innovation? Okay. The in innovation is very simple. Like, you know, when you wanted to make the last mile delivery easy and if effective, you need to have an inventory tracking. This we will be able to educate to the uh, to the uh, companies like, you know, Dr. Reddy's who is manufacturing something like Olini, spray gels, 
or you know dark red is something like they manufacture omaze which is a very big brand for them in india and i'm just saying it as an example in case if you do not have a inventory tracking if you cannot manage a third party driver if you do not have a data if you do not know whether the medicine has been delivered or not it is going to be a waste of time because you do not have you are not working in a system you are just manufacturing and you are just waiting for the things to happen which it would never happen so what is the need for innovation for this you need to build up sustainable products in the market you need to design a certain you know uh, you have to design a system you have to design the products that are viable and that are uh, like you know amicable for the people and in some cases you need to have the robotization in supply chain where there is an uh, zero emission transport right nowadays i'm sure all these graduates who are coming outside the pharmacy world right they will go and work in the pharma companies or they will able to work in different seg different segments department or some people may able to go to abroad right after 3 years of the time even the, the during the g7 and g20 commitments the government of india has given a very big commitment that we will able to stick to the um, stick to the zero landfill and zero carbon emissions and we'll able to keep the uh, um, the reusable products that are not going to have an impact on the environment so we'll have to develop the ecological um, the the ecological products that are environmental friendly and they will have a less kind of impact on the environment and when you complete your graduation after 2 years or 3 years time you will start look, uh, understanding about something called sustainability sustainability now the uh, the developed countries like you know uh, america uk europe hong kong japan even india is now struggling because you see when you go into the market uh, the companies are saying that we cannot able to sell you uh, the products with a plastic cover right the government has put up an uh, barcode in place saying that you need to use a plastic wrap that can able to be more than 50% 50 micron in strength the reason why is that they wanted to protect the environment after the 2050 there is an oath that has taken by the government of india that we will not able to use anything that is plastic okay that can be a biodegradable plastic so you will have to build the products that are sustainable and that do not have an impact on the future generations okay uh, that should be combined with your robotization and supply chain that have a zero carbon emission and that have a zero percent effect on the environment so this is the innovative idea that you wanted to say that my generation they are safe and i wanted to give something back to the future generation so that the future generations should also be having a kind of peaceful life not having any kind of you know the pan panics or pandemics or not having any other other viral diseases because of the impact on the environment now how you will able to meet the innovation goals right uh, with that you need to work on a supply chain holistic uh, plan and you'll have to have a, a segmented last mile delivery model for example if i work in uh, the state of uh, telangana we have 13 states if you work in the state of andhra pradesh you need to understand the landscape you need to design the last last mile delivery model plan you need to work out in a kind of system where the medicines do not get delayed until it reaches to the customer hand it is uh, with all the developer with all the robust supply chains we have the value chains we have in the industry we are actually having an effective kind of quality management within the company but outside the once the product comes outside we do not know how many number of distributors are there for that product how many people are really in need of that uh, these products so uh, even the developed countries are working on different databases that is why you will able to hear data 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 everywhere it is data but how this data the real data collection is very important and then you need to work with the pharmacies if you are working as a product manager in a company you need to understand within that state within that city within that village what could be the usage of medicine what could be the timeline that you need to meet how many pharmacies or how many hospitals require last mile deliveries that to be effective and you know there is no delay at all for any patient i have seen n number of cases n number of people who have died who have been died without any medicines that they, they didn't receive example a lot of cancer patients they actually wait for a high quality imported quality medicines though the medicines are not available in india they will wait they will keep waiting and waiting and they will be dead and, and in india the, the innovation is still taking place right there is an example i have showcased here which is a coca cola company uh, during my marketing study you know my marketing manager used to say that you know in india they say uh, the funniest part is that you can able to find a coca cola bottle where you will not able to find a bottle of water so why because the coca cola has got a core leadership development process 
they work on the shrewd stringent logistics plan you go to anywhere in the village maybe the airtel network will not come or not but you are you will able to find a coca cola bottle there right so this is all about understanding this uh, the patient needs and you will have to assess the uh, patient kind of you know requirements then only you can able to give the access to the life saving medicines with a reduced necessary burdens and healthcare system this is very very important and crucial so just do not think that i am just working for a uh, for a company i just need to get a job but your job should have an impact on the patient life right uh, the future opportunities for these guys right you know the the pharmacy graduates who are working in this uh, in this arena apart from the your analytical uh, r and d jobs or quality control production qa or in process ppic pharmacovigilance or uh, regulatory affairs whatever the jobs you normally see apart from that there are a severe number of unmet needs i've just done the pharmacy why do i need to uh, uh, why do i need to learn something like a coding or why i need to go into an application development your degree is just a degree for your information right so you need to understand because you are working you are you are actually studying the science you will able to understand very much in detail what is the patient need based on that you will able to work with the application developers and you bring out something that is in the arena of iot right and you will able to implement a process if in future you are all going to be the leaders right then you need to understand what kind of the things that i can able to bring as a leader on board so that you know the patient health can be uh, improved right you know the better quality of medicines no wastage no loss of medicines for that you need to work on drone innovations you can able to work with the parties who are actually on the working on the drone innovations you might be thinking how are you able to work i am not i am not actually designing a drone you do not need to design a drone but you can able to work with the 3 pls the logistics service providers the e commerce partners there are companies like uh, e delivery um i i cannot remember but uh, there are i mean prime deliveries are there um uber eats is there dhl has got their uh, different set of uh, platform one mg has got their own set of delivery partners right you know where they require the people who are actually uh, qualified as graduates in pharmacy in pharmaceutical world because uh, a btech guy a technology guy may not able to understand about the quality of medicine that why they need it but you have studied the science you should able to understand why there is an urgency for giving an um, effective medicine uh, to the right uh, to the right patient right if you delay the patient's need right if you delay the medicine they will not able to recover on time right sometimes the things get worse and you know they may able to lose their life right for that that's the reason you need to study you need to implement your um, uh, your subject in the right direction taking um, uh, taking a kind of you know uh, certain steps into you know route planning or uh, uh, or something like you know you you should able to work on barcoding qr code traceability um, there are there are like people working on the forensics as well and there are people i am working on real time tracking and visibility for example if if i have been working on anti malarial vaccine there is an uh, patented vaccine going to come to india you all do not know about it right there is one one vaccine uh, which is a patented vaccine that is going to come very soon right the the plan is that by the year 2022 we should able to bring one patented vaccine being manufactured one of, by one of the top global companies across the world but right now what we are doing we are doing a pilot project in um in latin america right uh, in panama i should say and we are actually trying to distribute the vaccines in one certain model and if that model works within india we for up to one and a half year by the year 2023 we wanted to bring an anti malarial vaccine which is a patented vaccine and it is in um, uh, very highly confidential information that you know if this vaccine comes in lot of deaths will uh, will be eradicated because lot of people uh, die from malaria and dengue so if this anti malarial vaccine comes in place a lot of human lives can be saved so and there should be special consideration to be taken while you are actually doing the drone delivery while uh, while you supply something like vaccines uh, you go to a pharmacy with an infant baby less than 1 year they will able to pull out the vaccines and give to the baby there are like 10 different or 12 different types of vaccines that they will able to give like diphtheria tetanus vaccine anti malarial vaccine anti tuberculosis vaccine or h uh, hiv um hepatitis b vaccine all these kind of vaccines are required to be stored in the uh, certain temperatures like 2 to 8 or minus 40 minus 20 degrees so for this you need to have a digital infrastructure i said to you in the earlier slide uh, how to build the infrastructure 
infrastructure and how to digitize this and how to make the customer communication effective right and what are the stalwarts doing when i say the stalwarts there are people like you know merck has been investing heavily i i i don't know how many people have you uh, actually gone through uh, uh, these kind of things that are innovations going on uh, but there is a company called merck merck is an msd which is a german company they are investing millions and millions of dollars uh, they tied up with various drone delivery partners and collaborating with it because merck is seeing merck is seeing something like after 20 years what i should do they are just starting to do all these activities now so that their their needs will be met and they will be top one by the time their requirements will come up we do not know whether these kind of requirements will come or not but the pharma companies are ready with it and there are companies like you can see the drones like db shankar right they are actually carrying about 300 kg 500 kg is worth of uh, uh, the medicines whether they can able to travel for 100 miles 50 miles they are doing the electric volo drone uh, trials also uh, i am sure that there will be a, a big amount of uh, uh, there will be a big amount of studies that are available on the internet you can see the case studies by pfizer biontech during the vaccine delivery process also we know that india has been self but there are n number of countries they didn't even get the vaccines on time that has led to the patient's death so if we have the effective logistics in place the vaccines could have been reaching like within three days five days by the time they, re they reach it and uh, what is the jane pharma company's future plan right the companies like uh, pfizer gsk merck johnson and johnson they are partnering with uh, several startups they are pouring millions of dollars of money in developing these last mile deliveries because by the end of the day, they actually invest $1 billion in developing one product that is in the, uh, in the NCE form or NDA form or into a generic form. And, you know, if they are not able to give it to the person who is in need on time, that is a complete failure, right? So we, I should say that when you compare about 30 years back to now, we are in a better position. We have a better logistic system in place. But is it, is it enough or is there something that we can able to do? And I'm saying there could be a lot of innovations that are required. And I have actually gone through certain challenges. These are all other challenges, especially in the developed countries. They are not letting the drone delivery to happen because of data breach and, you know, the privacy. Uh, for example, if someone see a drone flying on their uh, outside their home, people think that someone is actually trying to spy. So this is one of the risks that people should have to overcome. Uh, I know for every product, there is a challenge for everything. There is a demand, but there is a challenge, right? If you, you will be surprised, right? You know, you all use Amazon, Amazon, Amazon is into e-retailing, into the e-commerce. They are now uh, uh, selling all the electronics, gadgets, anything and everything. They are now into groceries. Now, Amazon wants to come into pharma, pharmaceutical medicine distribution into the last mile, right? Why? Because what amazon is doing they do something called research right they do a primary research and secondary research when they have done the secondary research in us what people have said assuming the drones could deliver your package within an hour when they want the medicine how many people look at like you know almost about 79 percent of the people they said that yes this is something like you know they have done this uh, study with cvs health pharmacy they have taken a set of the people, they have, they have actually done the secondary research and they said that, yes, there is a scope that people want to have the innovation, people want to have a better kind of systems to be developed, right? So uh, that is the reason Amazon has invested heavily. If you look at the year 2016 to the year 2020, there is there are significant number of drones per thousand people of population, right? And Amazon is saying that we are not going to stop, stop down here. It's not just Amazon, even Uber, even DHL, even DB Shankar, even Marken. You know, you take the name, even World Courier, World Courier, PDP, Cryo PDP, Air Liquid Logistics. There are n number of companies who have been every year. They are actually budgeting about millions of dollars for the innovation because they wanted to show that we are the best in delivery. We have like, you know, the timely delivery systems than anyone else. We have the best best kind of fleet where they will not able to breach out the data privacy where your products will be safe where you once the uh, drone is going to drop the product in front of your home the product should not get damaged so all these parameters the companies like amazon or different companies 
considering it and putting it into their uh, system and trying to give you the offering what i would suggest in today's world is that you should be able to think yourself what you wanted to do right apart from the quality or some that you actually see you see a day to day activity in the quality people talk standard general test procedures sops protocols validation reports they are all one time at one point of time they are all much needed because you see the case of india or uh, you see the case of any regulatory agency's expectation like usfda or mhra anvisa tga or even even south african regulatory agency they are now very well versed with all the quality test data that is being pro that is being provided by the pharma companies now what they are looking at is the gxp and gdp gui guidelines right there is no company in the world still have a robust gdp guidelines till date people are talking about the glp gmp or uh, gcp good clinical practices but when you talk about the good distribution practices we are still weak and especially the country like india there is a lot of work to be done because we, if if this kind of you know the last mile effective delivery logistics to be placed they require to pour a significant amount of investment into the innovations and will drone delivery be the next big thing do you all say yes or no after my presentation i would say i would take it as yes your answer could be yes maybe some people may think that it it is definitely going to take a little more time but there is a severe demand because it is going to reduce your distribution costs for example if you have been using a swiggy or a zomato or instamart or some uh, or uber eats or donzo if you are using it just for buying a pizza i am sure you will able to because why you are buying through online right through an e-commerce because you wanted to have it as in a faster delivery you cannot able to wait you do not wait to you do not want to wait in line for medicines or for any kind of food items right if you have the better systems in place with a better tracking ability if the medicines are genuine i am sure everyone wants to adapt to the drone delivery uh, logistic system because that is going to save the environment that is not going to lead any kind of carbon emissions any kind of fuel emissions in the world right there are people who ask me the question like you know you are only talking about the pharmaceutical medicines or medical devices that requires uh, immediately a kind of drone delivery what about the biomedical supplies or blood supplies or diagnostic services because you see in the current scenario if you look at the demand of pharma against the demand of all the other things the pharma consumers are huge right uh in order to come to the biomedical supplies for example if someone is having a heart transplantation right they have a heart coming into the shamshabad gmr airport from there they have to send to the respective hospital which is like 20 miles away from the airport during the time i am sure a drone delivery will be the best effective kind of approach than going by road because by road you need to it will definitely take a lot of time but if they actually go for a go going for a drone delivery they will definitely have a lot of time saving because these kind of surgeries requires an immediate attention and time is critical at the time um, why people are not investing into the biomedical supplies blood supplies because there is less demand when the demand is not there people investment will come down but once the pharma takes up the next level of pickup is going to go into the other segments like biomedical divisions or medical devices or blood supplies i would like to open up the session for any questions or any suggestions or anything that people would like to ask or comment please because i have come to the end of the session thank you participants if you have any questions uh, you can ask sir now the session is open for uh, discussion students okay now uh, what i will do na if any 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 good question comes up from one one student i will able to ensure that they will able to get a good job in a company i will give the reference a uh, students actually it is a very good opportunity so i can please. refer you directly into the job that you would like to start in a company i got good contacts tell me 
So students, if you have any queries, you can ask uh, sir now. There is if no need to can, ask any uh, question. You can share your thoughts, right? You know, you can share your thought. What you feel like with the drone delivery, uh, probably in the current scenario in India, people will, will use drones for playing games, right? But it is not that. It is something that we are trying to show a different value proposition. And in that, there is a lot of innovation required, right? Someone is raising a hand at the back, maybe. Uh, you can drop a question in the chat box also, so that uh, it will be answered. Yeah, there is someone there called Ani. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sir, I have a question in asking about drone delivery, about using in pharma company. Yeah, within the pharma company, I mean, uh, we need to be very specific. Why would we need a drone delivery in a pharma company, right? If you if the company size is like about five acres, ten acres, uh, what is the peculiar situation that they will have an issue? So within the pharma companies using the drone delivery, maybe it is possible, but what is the need? There is no need for that, right? We are talking about the last mile deliveries. Within the pharma companies, it goes into a closed circuit environment where you know people will able to have the internal uh, road tracking systems and they will able to put it uh, across. But that could be a definitely good question, but it is something that, you know, the companies will have to take a call. Still? Okay, okay. yeah, even the faculty members also can ask the questions, you know, I, I, I wouldn't mind answering. Or uh, I, I hope this session definitely has been useful. Actually, it okay. was a very good uh, uh, presentation, sir. So now, uh, I think there are no questions. Excuse me, may I ask a question? Yes, please, sir. I'm waiting for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, certainly you have discussed a lot about the logistics and uh, using the drone technology for the drug delivery. Uh, uh, from a security point of view, uh, what's what are your thoughts? Yeah. Uh, the, that's definitely a good point. Like I said, because you know, I mean, uh, you know, a hacker can def definitely hack into the system, and the drone could be easily controlled. I'm not saying that, you know, this yeah, yeah, possible. Uh, You're but, absolutely you know, right. Getting the wrong drugs into the wrong hands is actually a recipe for disaster. I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you 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 absolutely nailed one of the points that is really important and critical. So, uh, uh, for example, you know, for anything and everything, there, there are threats, right? And these are called risks in the supply chain management. So when we are actually uh, trying to uh, uh, frame up a kind of supply chain process uh, or a system, we'll have to have a foolproof system in place where the products do not end up into going into the wrong hands. At the same time, you know, the company brand value should be protected. Uh, so in that case, the innovation is required. I am sure that we are still at the early early stage. That's the reason this is definitely going to be an arena where a lot of things to be uh, come into control, a lot of controls to be put in, a lot of real-time tracking uh, sensors are required. And uh, I can tell you, you know, uh, because of these innovation ideas, uh, like Mr. Madhumita had said, right? There are n number of things that people should sit together, write down what are all the risks that they are going to see during the whole end to end process. And they will have to minimize the risks by putting a foolproof system in place so that, you know, the products will not be able to go into the wrong hands. Today, for sure, we, they have a strong barcoding systems in place. They have real time tracking. The drones have the cameras. They have the GPS link with the real time tracking in place. And the drone will be able to give the uh, remote sensing messages to the person, to the company, once they deliver, right? This, this is the current situation, but there is definitely a threat. And the threat is that it should not end up something like uh, the people hack it in the, on the way. And it should not be the case that people send uh, something else in the place of a medicine. So for that, a lot of innovation is required. And I am sure, you know, the, the work that we have done is just about 5% or 3%. But in order to be, bring up a foolproof system without having any abhorrences or disturbances, we should have to, there, is, there should be a lot of work to be done. And the future leaders, uh, the students who are actually, whom I am addressing to, are definitely going to be the game changers in the whole process. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for asking the question. Really appreciate that. So one more question, sir. Yeah, please. How can we assess the SWATs during the uh, drone deliveries? Uh, assess the what? Sorry, ma'am. SWATs, SWOTs. SWAT. Okay. Uh, so um, see, uh, the SWAT analysis is simple. Like you know, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Right. If you, if I, if I understand it correct, right. Yes, sir. So uh, in the drone delivery system, uh, we are at the early stage, right? Uh, like I'm saying, uh, this is the innovative product that this is not a fully ready product yet in the market, right? Like I said, you know, the companies like Amazon, if they are uh, working on it, there is a company called Origin, they're working on a very big project, right? The company like D.B. Shankar, they are working with helicopter systems. So the strengths and opportunities, weakness and threats will come in place. For example, you take the case of, I'm just taking the conversation a little, a little outside. You take the case of an uh, an Apple phone against an Android phone. The Android phone will have uh, will have less number of security features compared to an Apple phone, right? And also, when you when people talk about the strengths and weaknesses, the people who ever designs a very good foolproof system with a uh, high kind of real time approach, real time kind of evidential data, they have a better opportunity to progress further and it is all about the faster delivery it is all about the on time delivery it is all about the delivery that they 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 deliver it on time with a real time tracking ability uh, they be, they will be genuine and they can able to be reproducible they should able to replicate the same amount of experience every time the person like you know amazon may able to deliver a product they may able to deliver a product today but in tomorrow scenario they if they say that no we do not have a drone that goes into that area that means it's an opportunity for someone else who is actually waiting at the door and once the uh, the customer is gone it is gone right so it should be the case that the system should be should be very well stringently modernized all the risks should be minimized and all the innovation should come in place that you know where these drone deliveries definitely are going to take up uh, take up to the the things to the next level it is very much uh, is a need of the hour and I'm sure, you know, if I'm working in Hyderabad, if my grandmother is staying in Vishakapatnam and I have to buy the medicines, I couldn't go. But if I open an application interface, this is my future futuristic thinking process. Please understand, right? My grandmother could not able to go outside and buy the medicine. So I will able to open an application interface. I will ensure that she will able to get the fulfill the next next medicine, next month medicines to be filled up. So I will open the app. This is my futuristic thinking process, right? I open the app. I will order the medicines into the application. This app is going to be robotized. That will be fulfilling the order to XYZ regional partner there. I will make the payment. They will able to send it by drone locally to my grandmother's place. This will happen, right? This will. This is not immediately going to happen. But the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities are going to grow once the people understand the need they will able to minimize the risks. They will able to put the systems in place with an innovative kind of practice and better efficient procedures. For that, a, a full system should come in place. Until then, you know, we will be like, you know, showing up that we have done one project here, one project there to give the confidence to the hospitals, to the manufacturers and to the end users, right? The innovations will be, will keep happening up. And I'm sure in the next coming five years, we'll able to hear a lot about this subject. Thank you for asking the question. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Now, I request Mrs. Arunakumari Igu, IIC coordinator, to propose vote of thanks. Over to you, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for participating in IIC Impact Lecture Series Phase 2. Firstly, I would like to extend my Gratitude to our Director, National President, IPA, Dr. T.V. Narayana for his support and encouragement. I thank our Principal and IIC President, Lady Boss, Dr. G. Sumulata for standing as a pillar in organizing such events. Next, I would like to thank our Dynamic Secretary, Dr. T. Bharat Vikasa for his encouragement in organizing such events. I extend my sincere thanks to IIC Convener and Vice Principal Dr. D. Sri Lakshmi Ma'am for mentoring us to organize these activities. 
I extend my sincere thanks to today's speaker, Mr. Pavan Kumar sir, for taking time in spite of your busy schedule. Thank you so much, sir. Not but not the least, I would like to thank all the participants, students, teaching or non-teaching staff of Ecos Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences for your support throughout the session. Thank you one and all. Now I request IAC coordinator Ms. KPS Pranta ma'am to conclude this session. Thank you, Aruna ma'am. Uh, all the participants, you will be receiving your certificates within uh, one week. And I would like to extend my gratitude to the management of Vikas Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences, AICT, MHRD, for uh, giving the platform to organize these kind of uh, sessions in, at our institute. And I request all the participants to fill in the feedback form. Uh, it will be shared uh, shortly to you people. Once you fill the forms, you will be receiving your uh, uh, certificates within one week. And uh, some of the participants have given the wrong uh, email IDs. So request you to uh, give the correct ones when you are filling the Google forms. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for thank your you, opportunity. Sir. Thank you for the session and uh, thank yeah. you for the valuable time. And I would it like to pleasure thank... Pleasure meeting you all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Dr. Ravikiran, sir, I extend my sincere gratitude to you also, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, madam. Thank sir, you. if you don't mind, if you switch on your camera, we'll just take a, a screenshot of the session. <coughs> I request everyone to uh, switch on the webcams. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the participation, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye.